Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, and... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just spaced out. We can, do you want to start over? No, no? that's perfect. Thanks, perfect. Uh, George Tripp's here. Yay! Come on! Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you so much um, for taking the time to come and hang with us today. Anytime. Uh, it's just, all... just a quick jump over the pond. It's already been enlightening. Yep. George has explained to us that he loves doing videos, shoots millions of them all the time, really comfortable on camera, loves doing this stuff, so... Exactly. It's so funny, you've been... I've known about you for so long that when we heard you coming today, I thought, wow, they're going to be rolling him in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, Decrepit, and, and old. He, he, you know, here you are, you're not follically challenged at all, you know. Getting young. There. Getting so, there. yeah. But anyway. Um, For anyone who doesn't know, uh, George is associated with many brands over the years, way huge, uh, uh, also Dunlop and MXR nowadays. In fact, why don't we start there? And George, tell us a little bit about what you do now, just to, just to put some context on this video for anyone who doesn't know that. Uh, essentially now for Dunlop, uh, I'm the director of product development for electronics. So kind of all electronics go through, deciding what we're going to do for MXR, Crybaby, and Way Huge. So it's, Cause that's and, quite... and design. It's sort of a, a double. You know, I, I do a little bit of both. There's plenty of products I don't work on, but I sort of help with the, the initial why, how come, that kind of stuff, why we're doing it. And then uh, uh, other ones I'll literally design, do the schematic work with the layout guy. And the Dunlop stuff. product line is colossal, isn't it? It goes from everything from crybabies to all the way through many different fuzz faces. It goes back generations <laughs> with crybaby, fuzz face, univibe, MXR, and then wage. Yeah. Okay. What, if you're designing a pedal, right? <laughs> right. What makes it either a way huge pedal, oh, great or a question. pedal, or an It's a good question. Pedal. It, it kind of depends. I got a good question. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, it, because they're different brands and you expect different things. Right. You, know, you expect a certain thing from Way Huge uh, and you expect a certain thing from MXR. Mm -hmm. Like Swollen Pickle doesn't work as, as MXR. Okay, yeah, I mean, sure. not, not that yeah, we, yeah. but, but it, it's sort of like there's, there's a brand and a style that's associated with it. Because, so. okay, so. That's sort of a starting point. It's right. kind of like, okay, MXR is, is a traditional brand. It's mm -hmm. been around a long time and, and usually it's their, their, uh, they're easy to use, pretty straightforward and direct. Okay. And that's sort of the philosophy for MXR. Way huge, it really just comes out of me, what, what I'm kind of thinking about doing. Actually, tell us about that for a second, because you were way huge before the Dunlop connection, is that correct? Yeah, when I, I started uh, way huge, just doing it for fun in 92. Uh, uh, and then uh, officially, just that was all I did in about 94. And then I stopped doing it in 99 to go work at Line 6. And then uh, Jimmy and I had a chance encounter on Maui. And he had been wanting to, to buy and, and get involved with Way Huge since the day I closed it. And so I, wow. I, uh, it just sort of happened and came on. And That's what happened. It, I, it, actually, last week was 12 years at Dunlop. Oh, uh, no way. So I'm going to ask you the question that your father's probably asked you. Why, why the hell do you... Design guitar pedals. Why didn't you go out? And That's a, a fine, job? fine question, <laughs> and, and really, it started a, early on just playing guitar. I, you know, I got the uh, Craig Anderton pro electronic projects for musicians. I think I built a talk box. Just have oh, that wow. somewhere. You know, not, not that it's hard. You know, you hack yeah, off yeah. A, a horn driver, you stick it in a box, and you're done. Um, I started fidgeting with it then, and then when I moved to LA, I kind of started doing it more and uh, more and I think the real thing that kind of got me going is I, I got a Fox Tone machine. Okay. A decrepit tin can. It was falling apart, but it sounded amazing. And I'm like, I can't, I can't put this on my pedal board. It will, it will get smashed. So I figured out how to build one and just started building. And I wow. went, I'll call this stuff way huge. And, you know, just started noodling around. I mean, the first thing I, real circuit I did was a fuzz face. Right. right. So why how do you, uh, it just okay. happened. And how do you go from something like 
you know, a fuzz, when it's fuzz circuits, a fuzz circuit's quite a simple circuit, yeah? Yeah. But then um, you've got the, you know, your first delay pedal, the... Um, Aquapus. The Aquapus. Oh, I was, that was thrilled that I made that work, because I didn't know what, I, what the hell I was doing. Just and reading. it's a classic now. I mean, it's on... I mean, they fetch crazy money. Yeah. Uh, Brad Paisley, massive uh, fan of the Aquapus, if you don't know that. Pa well, the, the, the main guys are Paisley and uh, John Mayer. Then Keith Richards uses one, and, and so just just and Jeff, Beck, and Jeff Beck has used one, oh, not yeah, all the time, just, but so they got all four of them. So um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, we can honk. Who can we honk now? What did you say? You said John Mayer. John Mayer. We can honk him. Actually, you honk him because you know him. Uh, can you? Who's met, anyone met Keith Richards? Me. <laughs> Who, else? who was the other one? Uh, Jeff Beck. Uh, Jeff Beck. I didn't can, meet him. I stood near him though. I've got the oddest picture, which I'm going to put on the screen now, which is of <laughs> me at uh, Jeff Beck's graduation. <laughs> Um, true story. Uh, wow. And, and Brad Paisley, we can do a dual honk on Brad Paisley, I think. There we go. Beautiful. I'll just, I'll just sit here, enjoy the ambience. <laughs> do you want to honk any of those guys then? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I can't. Legally can't. Legally can't. It's a bi that's a binding contract. For, Ooh, um, good thing I didn't rule, honk for Jeff Beck. The rules of the uh, name drop horn is if you have met somebody and you drop their name, you have to honk them. Ah. So, so that's that. Anyway, sorry, Aquapus. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> So, uh, okay, I, how I was, many were made? You know, I've posted the list of serial numbers of the originals. I don't know the exact. Um, it was probably a few hundred. Wow. Of, pretty much all of them. I think the most of anything was maybe 500. Okay. I think the total of all original Way Huge, was a, including like weird prototypes and custom, in, in the, the low, low, low 3,000. Wow. So not, because, not okay. a lot. So there's there's so not a lot that, out there. That is fascinating because how does... How does a brand with low 3,000 products total end up being, I mean, the, the brand, you know, is, is huge. Everyone had heard. Literally, yes. Well, well everyone, <laughs> it's, like it's really huge, man. Everyone, but you know, it's, as guitar it, players, everyone knew, way huge. It was like. Cheeky humor. No. Right. <laughs> I, I really, you know, when I remember closing it down because it was like, in the pedal world in you know 98 99 was tough and i'm like mm. you know what the offer came from line six to help develop the 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 four stomp series and that was just really interesting and it's like i'm gonna go do that i couldn't do both yeah and right so uh, i shut it down uh was all the because you said it was kind of funky and cool and all of that was was all of that your doing the oh yeah, yeah. and all of that yeah just stupid I, like the cartoons my neighbor was a cartoonist we would just sit, drink, and he's like, we should do some cartoons. I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and that's sort of how Way Huge still functions. It's, it's more of like a, yeah, that'll be fun. Right. And, and it's it's not a, a uh, be, because of the brand, it's like, you know, I, I think about them differently. And that's, mm. you know, to continue answering that first question, you know, I think MXR differently. I think Crybaby differently. I think Way Huge. You know, what's appropriate for the brand, what products. Like when we did Ringworm, you know, uh, uh, one of the engineers who really did most of the work on that, who's a jazz pianist, he's like, a ring modulator, yeah. He's like, should it be MXR? I'm like, oh, we probably want to keep that with way huge. Most people don't know how to use a ring modulator. So <laughs> it went way huge because it just, it fit the brand. You know, it was going to be low numbers, all that kind of stuff, so. Is there is there ever a kind of a, a tension as to which way a pedal should go internally, or is it just obvious? It's usually pretty obvious, but it but it, it, it varies. Yeah. You know, we, we do different. What's your call? It's Jimmy's call. <laughs> oh, okay. At the end, but uh, but uh, it, it it's you know we figure out what what's the right thing for everything. Awesome. Well, we hope. Okay, <laughs> hold the line six thought, Dan. Oh. S seeing as we were talking about the Aquapus, I think we should hear it. Okay. So. Uh, we didn't actually get, uh, shockingly, we didn't actually get to um, MXR Dunlop way huge at NAMM this year. So now What? We, uh, well, we did, we <laughs> yes. did, we did, but Bobby was so busy and like it, he was doing a million videos and we had, right. anyway, it doesn't matter. We're here now, we've got you, what could be better than that? Let's have a listen, so this is a new small box. Yeah, this is a new small series we call, it. it's literally smaller. Same yeah. stuff? Pe pe same stuff, uh, the, the circuits are the same. Uh, the only change is the, s the smallness, if you will. Uh, you know, <laughs> now with that, it's obviously smallness. a lot of them have surface mount parts because, well, they're smaller. I have less mm -hmm. room. 
Um, like on the Russian Pickle, I went through and we used surface mount resistors, but all the capacitors and the transistors are all through hole full size because that's part of the sound on that. Right. But a resistor, I'm like, we can fight all day, but it's a resistive element. And if it's the same amount, I, I don't think you're really going to hear the, the difference. I'll fight ah, you on that. Ah, interesting. Okay, all right. Interesting. Unless you're doing high voltage, then it's different. But we're talking about 9 volts. So yes. Yeah. It's, it's a carbon comp, metal film, you know. I'll, you'll get angry emails from that, but I, I would challenge someone to go, I will show you the difference. Yeah, well, there's no way we can know without putting them side by side, is there? So, um, Aquapus sent up very uh, specific sounding, are we going to call it an echo or are we going to call it a delay? I mean, they only go to 300 milliseconds, which I yeah. guess is delay, mm -hmm. but you know, the, what, what it does best are slaps and short delays and, you know, it's got a nice, bright, kind of punchy delay sound and I think that's why people like it like a lot of people it's a, a leave on yep. kind of part of the tone delay as opposed to oh i kick that on all the time and this is the challenge right with analog delay is to get that less filtered repeat depends it depends some people want you know that's mm. some people analog it's dark and dirty and some people it, it really depends hit that's, it down come on Hear that? Hear that little little whistle that it, yeah, yeah. most get. You know, it's the clock frequency. Just you know, yeah. You always get a little bit of that. I remember doing uh, when we would model some of that stuff. We would actually put stuff in to recreate that. Right. Some kind of pitch thing that would create the the sound of the clock. Because if you didn't have that, then it's just a dark digital delay. So, uh, which is back to your original question, which is I guess a lot of analog delays they just roll all that off, so you don't hear it. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you, you have, you, I mean, it's, it's it low pass filters to get rid of the clock yeah. noise. Mm. The longer you make the delay, the more you know, you're, you're bringing that clock frequency down into audio spectrum. I think it's, I think uh, on the short ones, it's somewhere around 6K. I mean, you can hear 6K. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, there it is. Yeah, uh, knock. I have a question for you. We were talking about Brad Paisley earlier. How does he set his ankle? It's a fine question. I have no idea. Really? He showed me his. Oh, and, come on. And, and, you know, I didn't take good notes. <laughs> I really don't know. I, I, maybe there's a picture. I, I think I forget. it's like... I can't do any Brad Paisley. You do the Brad Paisley. <laughs> I can't do Brad Paisley. Yeah, but you got the telly. Oh no, oh no, oh no, and there's another one. Yeah! There you go. There you go. I bet you could do that better. No, I <laughs> doubt it. I'm gonna drink some water, everybody, so I'm gonna lean over here and figure uh, we would do that. And then Now that's refreshing. <laughs> The last time I met you, George, I think was in 2012, and we were in London. He wasn't drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be fair, Jimmy Dunlop was around that day, and there was a tequila or two flowing around. Probably. It was Perhaps, a good day. Perhaps, maybe. Uh, and I think the Echo Puss was either yeah, just prototyped at it that was, point. Uh, it was about to be released, I believe. I think I got, I got a little, little water. Little water. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I think we were releasing it. It was kind of, I had a prototype with me. I think I even did a video. Some you jackass did. chords. Some nice chords, as I remember. <laughs> okay, 
How does it, oh, so what the main, how does, obviously it's called Puss, what the, The Aquapus is literally what I did is uh, I grabbed, it's an Aquapus circuit, double the bucket brigade, and a, a different uh, clock circuit to get the modulation, right. added a tone control. Ah. So you can kind of get dark delays, bright delays, it goes to 600 milliseconds, uh, has speed and depth for the modulation, so it's a different really more for longer delays but it gets pretty snappy slaps as well Come on, so. with the tone control you get So that's no modulation, here's some modulation. The best part about Antler that, that <laughs> just, it's so, so cool. Get some grunge on there, Dan. question so then i'm assuming this is a buffered switcher or no, no, they, no really no buffers so, or you can you can program buffers in there right there's Interesting. No buffers. were you hearing some top end come back then no no I, I just because the geisha is got the impedance you can roll the volume back and it's interactive and yeah it, it was working yeah. Yeah, yeah i was like oh that's a really nice buffer it's working with it no buffer. i assumed it was a buffer making ass of you and me <laughs> but no <clears throat> we shall not flat the laws of physics yeah so. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, I want to come back to delay in a minute because remember we said hold the line six thought. Hold that, just da -da -da -da. hold it. Geisha. I'll be gone in 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Geisha, we were just hearing that and you told me that Michael. I Lando told you nothing about. <clears throat> likes it. He hasn't played one of those yet. Oh, okay. He has a, uh, uh, a Mr. Box. Ah. Essentially, the Geisha is a then slightly modified version of a Mr. Box. And a Mr. Box was sort of my take on a sonic distortion. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to get that Landau kind of thing. Landau gave me some pointers on what, how he uses his and what he likes and dislikes about it. And I tweaked and I gave him one of those. And then I tweaked some more and, and decided to come out with this little limited. And there's two versions of the Geisha. And it's not even called Geisha. It's just called Drive. There's okay. a picture of a geisha on it. We all call it geisha drive. It, uh, technically, it's called drive, <laughs> okay. which is a whole long story. But um, there's only a thousand. There's 500 red ones that were international, and there's 500 blue ones that were in the U.S. The geishas were all up in arms about it. Yeah, they that's what it was. Wasn't it? You what? had a load of nasty letters from Japan. So no, no, no. Uh, uh, it's a long story. It's <laughs> okay. a long story. So, uh, is this? What is this? Uh, uh, op amp type overdrive? Yeah. Is it uh, okay? Yeah, it's a it's a standard. You know, uh, it's got hard clipping diodes, op amp distortion. <clears throat> I love it when he talks like that. Yeah, <laughs> makes us all a Twitter. <laughs> so okay, um, what was quite? It had a very nice top end there. Mm. I was, I was yeah, hearing. yeah, yeah. Well, that was the biggest finding the spot on the tone control. You know, like on the yeah, the one that shall not be named. Uh, you know, it's got a very limited range. It's like, right. oh, it sounds good there. If you move it either way, yeah, it's just yes. like horrible. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, it was kind of stretching that range out so you feel like you have a little more space to find your, your tone on it. That's basically what I did. volume back it'll get more well, like if I just turn that off a sec just mm. so I can hear the pedal it's, it's got that really nice almost 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 like a fuzzy top end on there yeah and it's almost I mean if you if you dime the drive on it you know you get kind of fuzzy tones and then you can roll your volume back and it starts to smooth out and then if you need just hammer it you turn your I volume I hear up. how that works with handbuckers as well <laughs> looking for <laughs> got there in the you end you get a little juice out of the amp and... yes i really like the way it retains that uh we also sorry dan i'm doing all the talking you this is oh. too interesting uh, we had a little pre-video conversation um george you're not a huge fan of the whole clon thing oh we don't want to say that live oh, i know but it's not your it's saying we were talking uh, yeah. about personal preferences yeah i mean they're a great pedal uh i find other things that work for me what I'm, Ooh. what I'm hit, well, <laughs> as we all do. What the thing I was going to say was, I'm hearing some of that, the way it keeps that high end nice and crisp and clear. Yeah. And I'm not saying it doesn't sound like a clone. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I'm saying that if you take a tube screamer or just a bog standard overdrive, quite often there's a lot of high end roll off, and in there it's yeah. still there and it's yeah. really nice and defined. It's very and, difficult to get that characteristic without it sounding fizzy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was the. The complaint yeah. of, of that particular drive. It's fizzy. It's really cool, but there's this fizziness. It's just too much of it. Mm. And so I was figuring that out, keeping, you're kind of keeping it all there, but, but taking away the bad stuff, which is always hard. Yeah. Because usually the good comes with the bad. Can I ask, what no. are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When you're designing a pedal, because, you know, one thing that we do on the show a lot, you know, different pedals, different guitars, different amplifiers, Everything sounds radically different. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are you listening to? What, you know, what are you designing with primarily when you're designing a pedal? What, what's, is there a specific amplifier you use? I use a specific amp just for my testing, which is a Hot Rod DeVille right. 212. Right. Because it's a, just a good, it's a, a lot of people use it for gigging. Mm -hmm. It's a backline amp. It's a standard. Um, I have a whole bunch of other stuff I'll listen through and then Usually I have a handful of testers that they'll go through all different stuff. So I'll get my take and go, okay, it's here. Mm -hmm. And then they'll yell at me, it's all wrong. <laughs> and I go, huh, oh, interesting. I may go see them and listen to it and hear their, and then tweak from there. So, But are you, you know, by the time a pedal comes out, do you ever think, all right, this sounds great into the Fender amp, but into the Marshall, it's not going to work? Or, you know. Sometimes, I mean, right. sometimes there, there are stuff that just, you know, Frankly, a fuzz face works best into a Marshall. Yes, it absolutely. Just, can you make it sound good in other amps? Yes, yes, you can. But that traditional, when, when people go, wow, that's amazing. It's mm. some kind of single coil, usually yeah. a Strat, with a fuzz face into a Marshall that's just screaming loud. And it's there's a beauty to that. Well, speaking of fuzzes, so this is the first time I've seen this, ah. which is the, the 108. Fuzz. It's a classic 108 fuzz shrunken into a teeny tiny form. 
108, presumably BC 108, BC silicon 108, based. Yeah. First phase type circuit. Exactly. And what's yeah. really interesting is you've put a buffer switch on Yeah, there. we did that uh, a few years ago for a number of different reasons. I mean, it just it changes the way it sounds. Mm. Some people really like that sound. The other one was, you know, a lot of fuzz faces, most don't, work with a wah. Mm -hmm. And usually you can kick that on because most wahs don't have an output buffer. Although I actually put an output buffer into the bottom of the wah because at the time he was using a fuzz face. Right. So it would just... If you use them together, it works. So you stick that ahead of your wah wah? Depends. You know, with a fuzz face and a wah, if you know if they're not buffered, we, you, we, you figure it out. But, but it, on this one, you would go wah, fuzz face, and then if it squeals, you kick the buffer on and we it'll work. Dan and I made a video about this very topic this morning, and ah. it's, it's heartening that George has just come in and confirmed everything we learned. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm back in the, in the 80s and 90s, I would literally put a tube screamer between the two. Right. Because it has a buffer and yeah, they, yeah. they would work. And I would f up the fuzz face if you're really after that traditional guitar into the fuzz mm. face with the impedance mismatch, which I am. So now it's just a fuzz face and I'm done. Okay, let's have a listen. Uh, come on, George. I'm not playing. Have yeah, trying. come on. No, come no, on. no, no, no. Just, no. Just no, you play. You guys got to demo this stuff. I, the guitar here is merely a prop. <laughs> okay. I'll play later. Sorry. <laughs> so you're going to hear how big and woolly it is with a humbucker, which can be cool, but it's yeah. not that just... Both Dan and I probably prefer fuzz face type things, but, 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 let's, uh... It's messing. Telly, <laughs> telly, telly, telly. telly. But it's cool, you got that wooliness, but you know, it's a little, it's a lot more to control. Yeah, with yeah, a single yeah, coil, yeah. you have a lot more control with it. It's lovely. I, uh, I just turned the high treble tr channel up on the Marshall a little bit. We normally have that down because it, it, it's, it's killer. And I'm going to do the thing that should never be done. I'm going to turn the bright switch on on the, uh, on the super and it'll sound uh, horrific. But yep. g give it a go. do nothing really except drive whatever is well you'll you'll it. hear it different because uh fuzz face because the impedance it, it shifts how the fuzz face sounds it was initially put on there to work with the wah-wahs, but a lot of people found that they just like that sound better. Yeah, yeah it just gives right. you a little it's, more... It, it cuts a, some of the low end out, that really tubbiness that's so wonderful, but... Yeah. 
it's untamable. Well, too much with this. Yeah, especially the humbuckers. So. Okay. Um, you know what? Everyone's screaming at the screen. <clears throat> yes. Well, that's why I said hold the delay thing in mind. So <laughs> we haven't seen the car. Uh, oh, you guys haven't? No. Oh. Uh, um, we can't get hold of one. A little bit of history. It, me neither. So, so honestly, I finally got one. <laughs> Carbon Copy Deluxe. George mentioned um, after the f first version of uh, Way Huge, you went to work for Line 6. Correct. And I've quoted this in videos before saying that you worked on the DL4. Is that true? I was the product manager for DL4. I actually consulted on the whole product line for the pedals for a few months before I decided to go work there. So, wow. yeah, I can tell you everything about the DL4. Who did we meet in LA? <clears throat> Do you remember his name? Uh, someone who worked for Roland who also worked on that project. Yeah, and a, lot of pe there are a lot of people, I, I mean, it was by no means yeah, yeah. I did it. You know, there was uh, Nigel no, coded, uh, Kevin did more coding, Michelle Kevin, did Kevin, a... Kevin. Engineers. I'm just rattling yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, uh, there was a lot of people. There was not, I just kind of ran the project, picked, I mean, my role, I picked which things to model, what to call it, what to name it, uh, how the looper function kind of became. Mm -hmm. I brought in a friend of mine who did like looping. It was a band, it was a two piece band, he would loop. I brought him in, like, play for us. We how him funny into is this? Room. When I did, um, so doing the, the Radiohead rig for Ed O'Brien, they still use, Ed still uses the DL4 for his looping. And I know a lot of guys absolutely yeah. love the DL4 for its looping Well, what's the hardest thing about looping? The, uh, Turning what, the damn thing on and off. Yeah, yeah right. but it's, it's really easy to use. It was thought out that way, mm. you know, because I, myself, a guitar player, I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> so it's like, especially playing, I don't want to think about a lot of things. It's yeah. like, it's either I'm playing or I'm talking. You know, and, and so uh, it, it's really easy to use. It's, it, it is a good looper. And the original concept before I came on was quite different. But I, I brought a friend in, my friend Walter came in and, and demoed just how he used the looper he was using with the other effects. And we watched him for a half hour and just, you know, took notes and, you know, figured out how, how to. And then I sat down and figured out, okay, how do we do all this with these four buttons? Right. So. Because it, I mean, that pedal changed so Did, many things absolutely yeah no yeah. it was uh, and that's why i went to line six i was like this is cool mm. this is way out of what i could do in my garage uh this is really neat it doesn't have the whole you know you're not trying to model a tube amp like cloning effects is yeah, yeah. it's just i think for, now it's different but back then it was seen as not as obscene if you will you know yeah. people <laughs> weren't so like you know modeling that's terrible but with effects it's like oh cool because you know if you've ever had an echoplex they're brilliant, but you know, keeping them running and yeah, all that, even then, was hard. Mm. So, it, um, obviously, you're all over the analog side of things. How is your digital technical knowledge? Were you involved on that side of like coding? Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, I don't code. I don't even know how it works. I mean, <clears> no, I, I would works. sit with the with the, the, the you know the, the coders, mm -hmm. talk to them about yeah, and then you know uh, Jeff did sound development, he would sit there and tweak stuff and mm. have the original unit and then, you know, would go through this process. So, I mean, Line 6 is a big team. Yeah. Right. You know, there would be, you know, maybe a dozen people. So we kick off then with Aquapus and we mentioned all those famous guys. You then get DL4 and frankly, who in the world hasn't used a DL4 at some point? Then we get Carbon Copy. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, MXR Carbon Copy, was, um, we're going to call it an analog delay? It is an analog delay. Great. 100%. That's <laughs> one of the first things I did with MXR was write up the carbon copy and then Bob Cedro, I literally wrote, this is what I want. Here's all the features. I mean, I called it carbon copy. It was green, the knobs, the layout. I'm like, and I want it for 150 bucks. Can you, and so Bob did his engineering magic and gave all those features, got it to a price point and, and, and we did it. Has, wow. to, has to be That's among... 10 years ago, I think it was 2008 it came out. Wow. Got to be among the most successful delay pedals It's done pretty ever. well. It's done pretty it's well. It's amazing. It, it, it's a good, solid analog delay. Mm. It gives you all the features that you really need. It works really well, runs on a battery. I mean, it was just check mark. I'm like, I want this, I want this, I want this. You know, I like this one, but it's got this problem. I like yep. the, and it was just a combination of all that. And I, I would say the carbon copy 
introduced analog delay to a whole new generation of guitar players who, had, who had never used it before. Yeah. Yeah. Because it went out of style. When I did the Aquapus, which was 95 or 96, I mean, you couldn't get an analog delay. Yeah. They weren't making them uh, just because it was more efficient to do digital, mm. you know, for Boss and Ibanez and all the big companies. And uh, I think Panasonic stopped making the Bucket Brigade in 99. 98, right. 99, they just gone. So uh, uh, no one really had them. And I, I wanted one, you know, just because I, I liked what they did. So what did you do with about the chips then? Well, they were still around then. They were right. really expensive. So I would buy Panasonic MN3005. Yeah. That's what's in the original Aquapus. Now uh, it's a different chip. Uh, it's a cool audio chip that's available. Mm. It's their 3205, E3205. But when the, when the first carbon copy came out, uh, we found, we made, the, the, I mean, well, it's so using four words. of the, at the time it was the BL3209 was around. Right. So yeah. there's still, you, you know, you can still grab, yeah. there's there still a few things around, but um, from memory, the carbon copy's got 300 milliseconds. Six? 600. 600. The original carbon copy is 600. Six, always. Really? Always that, was, that was the cool that thing, was the thing about it. Because 300 is oh, great, okay. yeah. but it's just on that verge of like, you can't, get long delay, like 300 is just not quite long enough. Right. It's okay, okay. But, right. you know, but I was like, no, we need 600. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a lot of bucket brigades. And that, that was my big concern. I'm like, how are we gonna do that and it not cost a fortune? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And the, and the modulation, so. Where you gotta we, have the modulation. You Deluxe the Memory Man, I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about that product that's so cool. Mm. I mean, you know, it's got a lot of gain issues and other things. It sounds really cool, but that modulation, you didn't get that on pedals very often. Yeah, yeah. So what do we add with Deluxe then? What, what have we added to the Carbon Copy? There's a whole blueprint? lot of features. The, the, the key features are basically bringing the modulation up, giving control over that, and adding tap tempo. Um, and with, the bright switch, some, I can see. And the there. brights to give you the, the, the Carbon Copy bright as well. Yeah. So you got the, those like, are the both main... of those are in there. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I mean, the, basically the difference between a Carbon Copy and Carbon Copy bright are the, the filters. Yep. It's changing the filters to be brighter. Mm -hmm. Which okay. is kind of part of what we were talking about with the Aquapus earlier, wasn't it? So. Right. Come yeah. on, man, let's have a listen. Uh, what are you number one, Dan? Uh, number one. Yeah. Hold on. Turn the modulation off first. Ah. I so this it, is the original. Well, it does twelve hundred milliseconds, so it does. No double. way. So if you, yeah, there you go. I'll let you guys do the hard work. Turn the knob. Uh, come on, you designed it. <laughs> I worked on it. Mostly Bob. Bob did most of the Carbon Copy Deluxe. Bob. Cedro. Cedro. Ah. Senior engineer at Dunlop. He, this is pretty much his baby. Right. The modulation on this is just... Super smooth. Beautiful. It's slightly different than the original carbon. It's just, it's just better. And you can turn it on and off on top. It's it's great. Nice. That's there's a number of other features in it that you can deep dive into it, uh, but those are sort of the main. What's the screen that for? Want. For uh, tap divisions. Oh, okay. So if you want to do different tap divisions, dotted eighth, eighth, triplet, sixteenth. Ah, I got all excited then. I thought presets. Anyway, it's just no me. presets. <laughs> oh, that seems like a lot of stuff to have in there for. Is it easier than just putting an extra knob on? Or? Sorry, I've just I've just realised this has got tap tempo. I've just sorry, I've, <laughs> I've literally just seen that. Wow, I, I was going to say, you know, you can Hang tap on. that in that little thing you were. <clears throat> okay, yeah. sorry, it's just become 
it was awesome, and now it's like even more more <laughs> awesome. It's it's awesome, awesome. I mean, the reason there's awesome no presets is because the the mix and the regen are analog knobs still. So you have okay. to convert that over to digital right. to make presets and then get into that. Because it's, so it's an analog single path. Yes, of course. That's controlled by a microprocessor. Uh, yeah. And is it still analog even though it's up to 1200? Yeah. It's got more bucket brigades wow. and I forget if it's six. I think it's six. It's been a while. The thing I always loved about my carbon copy was that it never got in the way and I think it's that kind of the way it's darker on the repeats and yeah, in front it of the amp. fills everything out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. With that, we, for many reasons, we're not huge fans of loops because they seem to vary so much. That's, and that, that's the issue. It's not that they're bad. It's yeah, like yeah, it yeah. depends on the designer where they put the loop. That's yep. why everyone's like, oh, does it work in loops? I'm like, there's no standard loop. So yeah. making it work with it means I have to put a total input output controllable, which then makes it difficult to use just in front of an amp. Yeah. You know, and that, that's the problem. And it costs a lot more and confusion. And, Whatnot, so. I want to talk about this. Actually, okay. no, actually, before we do that, before we talk about that, it's, it's this, I can't, I've, I've told this story a few times about George and those three real pillars of, of delay. <laughs> Sorry. Because, Sorry, I interrupt a lot. Because, so, good, no, we like that. Um, it's a big deal, isn't it? So mm. what next? Where, what, what happens with delay uh, next? Yes. What well, the last, did you guys get the Echo Plax? Uh, the MXR Echo yeah, Plex. Yeah, we, we yeah. The this, morning. this morning. Yeah, that was the last before this was the Echo Plex, which it's it's not like an EP3. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in there. And that's using a shark. It's got the right. big shark in there. Yeah, wow. so that is digital. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. not a real shark. <laughs> but analog, analog dry through, right? Analog super yes. fast. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's important. We think it's important. Yeah, well, that's, that's the one downfall of a DL4. It's all, it's, it's all digital. It's all digital. Yeah. So when you're going into it, it's on. Everything's yeah. digital. Yeah. It's before everyone really knew that that was how important that was in in pedals. Mm. But at the same time, you had guys plugging them into their twin reverbs, and they that they thought had been too bright all these years. Going, yeah, to darken wow, it up. That yeah. sounds awesome. You know, it, it's 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 still a great viable I, uh, delay. Mm. I mean, because if you're using multiple delays, you still have three there. I mean, yeah. it's. And and and, it's, and massively copied, of course. You know, everyone came in with a. a well, that started that started that whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, it, it, was came, that, it, and then, it shipped in October of 1999. Wow. That's nuts. Nearly 20 years old. Oh I know, God. and they they're still made and sold. That, my that my is, personal favorite thing are to make SM57s. I like <laughs> to make something once, and walk away. That is astonishing to think of a digital product that was designed in 98. Well, it was 98, yeah. yeah. Presumably hasn't changed that much. It hasn't changed at all. The logo on the top. And it's still so The logo, wow. That's astonishing. I mean, I, I, you know, not even something like a, whatever the DD version is now, 7 Boss, that's radically different than, than it was back then. Well, the 7, the 3, it's, I, you'd have to look inside, but I doubt yeah, yeah. it's the same parts because... No, it's, it's, the technology wrong. shifts. Yeah. Mm. I mean, eventually, yeah, the, the, the Freescale probably, probably won't be made anymore. And right. They'll have to do some kind of thing if they want to keep it running. I'd, well, I'd like to hear you play some delay because oh. delay is obviously a big deal for you. I, you know, here's the funny thing. It's not. <laughs> really. The, the, the funny part is I'm really not a giant pedal user. <laughs> Oh, and at the end of the day, oh, I like to plug into. Kind of plug straight I like to oh, plug yeah. in the amp or use a fuzz. A couple of things. It really depends. But, I think Jimmy Dunlop's just said. I, I went through. You know, <laughs> I mean, like everybody, it's like you go through those. I used to have tons. Use tons of pedals. Is it a phase you go through? You know, is there an end to this? Yes, at some point I'll probably you know be using a fractal. I don't. <laughs> no, uh, 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 you know, it, it was at the. A different time. It was mm. 20 years ago. Mm. You know, what I played and what I What do you play? Like. What's your thing? What do you... Now? Yeah. Oh, stupid expensive chords. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen clips of you playing and... You won't see that here, though. Oh. Come on, man. <laughs> no. I don't. Come on. Let's just... Let's just... Thank mm -hmm. you. 
11s? Uh, ish. Ten and a half. Now I'm like, wow, this feels weird. <laughs> Those weird in between strings and sizes are weird. Nice. You had this on, and you had. I, I like, like this. The, I, 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 you know, I really like the Mike, is, Mike showed me awesome. how he used it. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, I've had, you know, the sonic distortion before. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of ratty, and never knew. And he showed me that. I'm like, holy, sh that now makes it because it works like a fuzz face, in that it cleans up. And I'm like, oh, well, that's my favorite shit. That's my question. What's the question? You, all right. How do I do? I don't no, know. No, no. What's the... So, the whole thing about having a drive that cleans up like that. Right? Why does it do that? So, no, yes. so what's, the, what's the secret to designing a drive that cleans mm. up? So, there's this... I know there's this thing that when, you know, you're adding the resistance in here and the... And the, the, the impedance the, between the two. And that's like with a fuzz face, yeah. it's impedance. Yep. It's the high impedance and, and of input impedance of the fuzz face and the guitar. They don't match. Why does it do that? And now you're getting in way out of my league of understanding, but it does. Why this or the sonic distortion does, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's it's running the op amp really hard and it's clipping the rails on that and it just works. It's I was really a little like, huh. And you know, you get that if you you know, you dime this thing. Okay, that's ah, oh, that's what's on. <laughs> I'm like, that's wow, amazing. that's what that I want. I want control. Bright, yeah, when you turn it down like a like a fuzz, it's nothing like fuzz it's face. Not, it stays no, bright. No, it's got a similar face. interaction yeah, where, yeah. where it doesn't like a fuzz face will tend to get really bright. This doesn't do that, but it it stays. It cleans up really nice. I think yeah. I can see one of those in our future. Oh, Dan. dude. That's beautiful. Extremely cool. Extremely cool. Extremely cool. Way Extremely cool. cool. Okay. Uh, Blue Hippo. Now, the, the link I'm going to give to this is you posted a picture on the Instagram the other day. The outer webs? Or, uh, yeah. Or, or it, it might have been on fa Facebook or somewhere <laughs> like that. Old book. Uh, yeah, of uh, Mr. Bonamassa's new pedal board. Oh, yeah. Ah! You're, you're, you're big mates with Joe Bonamassa, right? Yeah. We won't go into all of that. Uh, we will give him a honk though, because I think we've all met him. I haven't met him. I don't met anybody. No, Man, no, you just they keep you locked no, in the closet, no. don't they? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, were but... on the way to interview him. We were literally in the car driving to interview him when we got a phone call. And I think he looked at his press schedule and went, that pedal show, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that, actually. No, I doubt that. I, 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 he I, loves a talk gear. Yeah. So. I've been lucky enough to go to his house and do all that stuff, so... Oh, he's a, a lovely chap, but uh, avoiding his um, earlier comments on <laughs> on the use of, use of pedals, I was Shh, let's not I, talk about that. I, at I all. was interested to see three pedals on his. So board. was I. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, cool. He 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 texted that to me. I'm like, oh wow, because I think I gave him, and that's like some weird, probably prototype of some sort. Because I'm like, I don't have any more. I got this here, and it was for home. 
you know, or you know, just you know, to have around the house in case he needed to go out and jam and to kind of get Leslie sounds. But right. there was uh, there's his wah. His there wah. was an overrated special, I think, was there? It's a black overrated special. We did ten of those for him. Yeah. What is that, by the way? Just what is an overrated special? Yeah, I haven't noticed. It's a tube one. screamer. Okay, great. <laughs> it's a tube screamer with a a, a 500 hertz control. Uh, oh wow! Did you already do that in another pedal, don't you? Isn't that? It's yeah, the Green Rhino Mark IV yeah. has 500. But uh, I'll give you a... Uh, no, nah, never mind. Go on, go on, no, no, come no, on. Now you started it. Come on, you started it. I can't start. I can't, I can't, I can't. We'll All edit right. it out. You won't edit it out. <laughs> Liars! We'll have, to, we'll have to wait till afterwards. And, and the last pedal was the Blue Hippo. Blue Fine, Hippo. Finally, we get the link. So this is obviously new in a small uh, box. It's the smalls. It's the same as the Blue Hippo Mark II, but it's Mark III because, well, it's, <laughs> it's one better. No, it's, it's the same circuit, made very small. And well, what does okay. he use it for? He uses it I for think the... he uses it for Leslie kind of stuff. Uh, the, I don't know if that's the setting he uses or not. Yeah. I, I was shocked to see more than two pedals because he's been using the Wah and the Double Land, which is just yeah. two overrated for a while now in the new rig because with the Twins, it's just... We, we, we Twins we, are just gnarly. I never wanted... cranked one until he had that over. I'm like, that's rad. I'd love to find a way of getting him a quartermaster and just power it up properly mm. so that I think he'd love it. A what? Uh, it's just Dan, a, Dan does just a rail switcher, which just, if you... A who what? A, like a, it's like, just like a, this, but smaller. It's true, ah. with good and relays just, and stuff. And he literally uses batteries. No power, mm. so he's, he's stripped down. Like, that's complicated now. He's, okay. And it's mostly because of the way the rig works now. And, yeah, uh, yeah there's no delays. There's It's... it's does he, how, how is he separating, because he's got three twins, right? Uh, the the secret, there's a TC chorus in the yeah. back. Uh, yeah. That's go. splitting, and, and then that goes to splitters that you know go out to just open up more. Okay. Yeah. It was two basements and two twins. And now then, it's four twins. Yeah. Which, yeah. when you, ah, it, it's, you know, like a, a JTM 45 mm -hmm. is sort of, it, this is the, the the twin is sort of like the American hundred watt Marshall, right. and nobody used the Tweed Twin like that really, the high powered, and you crank those up and, my God, <laughs> I was like, that's super cool. Is, that's um, Keith Richards. Keith, that's but his, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, those those things are ah, lit up. They're lit up. It's, it's, quite, it's wow. frightlingly it's loud. Quite a thing. It's yeah. Quite a thing. And yeah, it's 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 cool. So. Why will the hippo remain? Who knows? Come on, let's get a listen then. So. Mm. Super slow. As with vibrato, if you find the speed at how you use a, if you had a guitar with a big speed, yeah. you grabbed a big speed and did that, you find that speed with a vibrato pedal and you can get a very Bigsby like sound. <laughs> and how fast you would do this, which is usually kind of slow. Cool, another little trick I was taught by studio players. <laughs>
Yeah, I beautiful. Could, I could, I could, could, could use that. Be happy with that. <laughs> Love the wobble. Mm. That's wonderful. Love the wobble. Uh, right, and the la uh, we looked at the Russian pickle this morning in a video we did. So we won't do that. Again. Silicon 108. Uh, BC 183s in that. Uh, I told you the story earlier. It's a fascinating story. Was it? No. Nice. Come on then. <laughs> so basically, the Russian pickle came out because a friend of mine plays in a Pink Floyd tribute band in Los Angeles called Which One's Pink. What does he call himself? I have no idea. He's not Dave. He's uh, sort okay. of all the other parts that Dave has to play, like right. the, the lap steel. And uh, okay. Ken. And, and so, <laughs> so, and he had a, a, an original you know, 90s green Russian Big Muff that mm -hmm. sounds great. Would rarely work, you know, like when he needed it to work, of course it <laughs> wouldn't work. You know, so through over a couple of years I kept modifying Swollen Pickle, well, this sounds like that, until so finally I got tired of him going, no, nah, it's not right. So give me that thing. I took his original one, I took out all the parts, measured them out of circuit, put it all back together, and then built him one. He's like, oh my god, that's it. Wow. <laughs> so then I, I, I built another one. I sent it up to the office, and they're like, that's amazing. And, and so it, it became a product. What's the difference between, like, classic Big Muff and a Russian one, then? The Big Muffs all vary. I mean, yeah. I'm, and I'm no Big Muff expert. Uh, but I know, you know, a lot of that was using surplus parts, so you'll get the same era, different parts, different values. Uh, what is it? Kite, I believe his name, has that website, the Big Muff website. Right. Which... Can explain all your muff needs oh, okay. about every era and every version, and it's it's great. This one is the Russian pickle is based on one actual unit. I measured everything. I'm like, here you go, done, and I changed nothing from what his little hand built prototype has so to cool. that, other than the paint job. And is he a, so? If he is doing the Pink Floyd thing, is he predominantly a single coil guy, or is he? Yeah, and he, a lot of times he's using that for the lap steel. Oh wow! To get that real. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 Come on, let's hear, let's just hear a bit of it. Then. On the volume knob, I used an uh, audio taper because that's what was in the one I looked at, which oh, makes okay. that's why you got to so bring it up really high. Up here, Nice. That's really great. Yeah, when you get the hippo really slow, you get that like yeah, open, almost flanging. Yeah, but it's well, not quite. I love interesting. That. It was doing something interesting with the phase of the two amps there. Yeah. When it was on and off, like they were. Yeah, very cool. Very, right. cool, very, very cool. cool. Very cool. Okay, I've I've got one last question for you, sir. No. Um, <laughs> we haven't looked at this yet. If it is really. No, we're not. We're not looking at that. <laughs> okay. Nobody. Nobody this sees is, well, that. This is my last question. <laughs> I'm so. The question comes in three parts. Ah, uh -huh. um, so it's three questions. The, the first, so, are you surprised to see where we've got with pedals? Like, because you were there, you know, certainly one of the very early boutique builders. Yeah, I mean, it, the whole boutique thing starts with, you know, the, the, uh, my God, my brain just totally locked up. Uh, you know, Roger Mayer and, uh, 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 
makes the pedal boards. British. Um, oh, Pete oh, Cornish. Yeah, yeah. Pete Cornish. Yeah. I mean, that's early. And that's then, early. Then really, my opinion, the first guy is Jack Brozart, Prescription Electronics. Right. I still have a cassette for, you know, the demo for the experience pedal. And I think, then... I think Mike Piero mentioned him. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, you know, I mean, I've known Mike. We used to trade schematics in the early 90s all wow. the time. Wow. By mail, mind you. We would <laughs> write, you know, and, and there was a little bit of email, but it literally, you know, we would mail stuff. Uh, a lot of schematics online are probably from he and I. Wow. Like I can tell because there's marks I've put on stuff. I go, oh, yeah, that was the schematic I got out of Roland somehow. But, uh, uh, you know, and then there's the, the, the Way Huge, the Full Tone, Analog Man, uh, and then Zvex Voodoo Lab, and sort of the mid to, you know, 94, 95. So, mm. I think. I could, yeah. Uh, did you, uh, <clears throat> every time a new manufacturer came out or there was a new wave in pedals, we were all going, yeah, this has got to end soon. I mean, surely people are going to go back to racks or something like that. I mean, God forbid it ever does. But it was a question that everyone in the guitar well, industry I mean, was in asking. The, in the early 90s, we'd just come out of the racks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I, I started doing it in 92, so, you know, racks were still very much in play and around and, and, uh, but yeah, it's just exploded. Yeah, the internet has changed a lot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> when I was doing it to find out, you know, to you know get schematics and stuff, you you know, you had to be really nice. You had to get the technician at the company, like, hey, you know, to get a schematic of a tube screamer or something. And you know, it wasn't there wasn't the internet? You go tube screamer. That's what it is. Great. That wasn't around. So you really you had to to befriend people, be nice, and and you know, to get information and trade it. Mike and I've been doing that since you know probably like '93. Wow. So, but are you su are you surprised to see where it's gone? I mean, did you ever envisage the pedal industry being like it is today, where you can have two guys have a YouTube show? Well, YouTube wasn't. About, no, I mean, that's the know. crazy. The internet has changed everything. Right. On, okay. On all, so no, not at all. Right. I mean, I I because maybe I would have kept just doing it on my own. Right. The, the the idea of designing these, you know, working on a team to create these other products was really exciting. Mm. I mean, because that's the thing. It was me in a garage. I made them. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold, you know. Did you make them all yourself as well? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I think in 98, I had a production house that would stuff circuit boards mm -hmm. and assemble, you know, put them in the box, and then I would finish it up, test it, put knobs on. But that was at the very end. Wow. It was getting there. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to do this. And then this offer came up. I'm like, you know, this sounds like, this is the fun part. This is what I like to do. <laughs> this tinker. is <laughs> I like to. Well, I just, I like to tinker. And yeah, you can't yeah, do yeah. a lot of tinkering when you have yeah, to make yeah, sure yeah. product is built, product is sold, yeah. product is shipped. It's a lot of work. That always amazes me, that whole thing. You know, you might read a comment online where somebody looks at a pedal and they'll go, well, you know, it's got $20 worth of components in it, yeah. if that. And how come it costs? And it's like. Because of all that other stuff. Yeah, right. It's not hard mm. to build. Well, it no. is for me, but for you, it's not hard well, to build. Well, and, and it's easier now, too, because all the access for that stuff was difficult. Yeah, like, sure. You know, you couldn't order a housing from someplace online. Of course. You had to go to a metal manufacturer or buy a Hammond box, you know, and drill it all. I mean, mm. now you can order stuff drilled. Uh, you can order circuit boards made. All these things yeah, were sure. not available, and you would have to do that, which takes time. Mm. And as they say, mime is money. <laughs> So yeah, two, no, and that, two, you know, two spinal tap quotes. They're 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 uh, they're, uh, they're right, you know, about it. So, yeah, the cost this much, if, especially when you're buying components in bulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you go buy, you know, these parts from you know a vendor that's selling these things, it's not going to cost you that. It's going to cost more, mm -hmm. and then your time. So then eventually you're not valuing valuing your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. So well, that's been fascinating. And, and but no, I, to answer your question, I did not envision. You know, grand pedals. I just wanted to make cool stuff that I wanted. Right. That was really the way huge was like, I don't care what you want. I'm building stuff for me. Okay. I love awesome. that philosophy. Yeah, yeah, That's definitely. the way to do it. So what what next then? I mean, yeah. um, so for example, one thing we're seeing from other manufacturers are the beginnings of two or three pedals in one box with some digital control on it. Is that something you guys would be interested in or a different direction? Sure. I mean, you know, at, at all, what we have planned, I, you know... I'd have to get on my computer and start telling you stuff, and then I'd have to kill you. Okay. But uh, just there, there's a lot of stuff you can do now, and it really kind of the the consumers dictate mm. what really you want to make. What do consumers tell you they want, George? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a it's a process of you know looking at what people want, what people are buying, 
uh, you know, what guitar players I know are using and young people. And, you know, I'm old now, you know, the, the average. Not as, funnily enough, that's, I, it's just really, it's really interesting the way, because, you know, I think, because I've known about, like I said before, known about it for so long, but in actual fact, you know, like the early 90s, it's... You thought it's, he was a guy in a shed in his 60s in the early 90s? <laughs> yeah, because who was, who was, you know, oh, who brilliant. was tinkering around with stuff then? Because you must have 20. been... You I were was 20. You were 20, I must say, when I first met you, I was surprised too. Yeah, and you're still only 27 now, so it's I know. not bad. It's, it's not perfect. Bad. No, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, what we're going to do, who knows? I mean, it's... You know. <laughs> I know you're doing it. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, because I don't, I make stuff for me now, and right. that usually just stays with me. Right. Yeah, because yeah. what I want is not necessarily what, especially guitar players now want. I mean, I, I love fuzz faces, and I love making fuzz faces. It's fun. Most people don't, where, where is it? Oh, there isn't a big fuzz face. Damn you. There's one in, oh, there's one in the bottom of the oh. cupboard down there, and there's one in my bag. Right, well, well over here I, I have for you guys a bag o fuzz face. <laughs> So you can build your very own fuzz face. Really? All all the parts, things you need are right there. Come on. So yeah, build away. Uh, don't call me. I won't help you. <laughs> That's what the internet is for. It'll tell you how to make this. Everything you need is here. You can make a silicon, a germanium, germanium, whatever you want. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, Thank that's you. awesome. Well, there we wow. go. There's a show. Then <laughs> Dan and I always said we'd never get into building our own pedals, but that has just changed. The Seeing as Mr. But I mean, I love fuzz faces, but this is not a pedal board friendly product. Yeah, right. I mean, oh, that is so cool. All the bits, the pieces, knobs. This is the full wire harness. This is a circuit board you can stuff all on your very own and make. All the parts are there with some germanium oh, transistors. Man. This is basically a Hendrix rig that you can use all the bits from. Nice. I didn't feel like cutting individual wires to the length. Just like, yeah, use the wire oh, harness. Nice, nice, nice. I recognize this. This is the same as my uh, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, which was a fun, that was one of the really early projects at, at Dunlop was doing that, which is, I always wanted to go and look at that Octavio up at the Experience Museum. You know, I'm like, I want what Hendrix used if I want Hendrix stuff. Yeah, of course. So I'm like, I need a big round fuzz face, a big cheese wedge, you know, and a chrome Wawa. Oh, man, happy days, happy so days. Cool. Right. Okay, before we sign out, you have a, isn't there two more parts? To I that know, question? honestly, but okay. in each part comes with thirty subsections. Um, <laughs> well, but I think there's a beer afterwards because you know I've got I have so many questions for you. However, before so I can I, I can feel Simon looking at me going. Would you please I got a lot. I got a lot of editing. Bag? A lot of editing. <laughs> um, it, it has been an honor, really, oh, yeah, and, and thank Appreciate you so it. much. For, I mean, for everything. You know, from way huge and everything you've done, everything you're doing, um, the pedal world and pedal geeks of the world. Uh, Thank you. And eternally grateful. Thank you so I much. I appreciate it. I, I like uh, making people happy. Fabulous. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we just want to say a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. It is Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. You were there. Going 2012, there. I think. Okay, you're going there. You're going there I believe week. I'm going oh, there fantastic. on Thursday. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> in the USA. <laughs> in the USA. <laughs> uh, Rift City Guitar uh, of New Hope, Minnesota. And in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Fabulous. Please check them out online. Yeah, yeah. Great guys. And also, uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, guys. Thank you so much. Um, it really makes a difference. Finally, if you are so inclined to head over to thatpedalshowstore.com and check out one of these spectacular garments uh, and our new range of That Pedal Show Beef Jerky has Ooh. just become... I think uh, we should start selling these. Oh, brilliant. Look at that. Henry Juskovitz, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's what you could do. <laughs> Sorry, Henry. That was a good editor. You started it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks again, George. Thank really you. Appreciate that. Been an honor. Bye Cheers, bye. guys. See you next week. Bye.